Welcome to Alaska Weather. This is Eric Holloway with the National Weather Service for March 5th, 2022. A couple options for you. 1-800 number gets you into a menu system and you can get to your area of concern. And there's also the web at weather.gov slash Alaska. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at the email list at the bottom of the page. For hazardous weather, we do have some advisories and warnings out for Alaska. The one up there in Ambler's area, Kobuk, Noatak Valley, is going to be going out until 6 p.m. this evening while the winter weather advisory up there in the Brooks Range and Arctic Coast is going to be going out until midnight tonight. And that also includes the brisk wind advisory, the warning out there for Kaktova area. Also for the area in the eastern interior, it's going to be going out until 9 a.m. on Sunday. And that's also for portions of the Copper River Basin as well. And again, a winter weather advisory out until 9 a.m. Sunday. So please check those if you head outside. And underneath that Anchorage dot there on the map, there's actually a winter storm warning out, and that's in effect until 1 a.m. on Sunday. So be looking for that. It's a winter storm warning, again, for the Anchorage Bowl. And lastly, there's nothing going on in Juno's area. Nice to see that. For the satellite image, you can see the system wrapping up there in the western Aleutians, otherwise a oh, warm front, cold front with a low, pushes in through south central into Prince William Sound there, driving a lot of those, saw some moderate to heavy snow showers here in Anchorage Bowl this morning, otherwise some lingering snow showers there in the eastern interior. What does this look like on the service map? Those Snow showers will continue for today, again with that winter storm warning in the Anchorage Bowl, but otherwise in the winter weather advisory out there in the eastern interior. We also have some snow showers up there in the northwest corner of the mainland, and there's that 968 millibar low with an occluder front, driving mixed precipitation out there, and again some back through the Gulf region, mixed precipitation through the Panhandle, and that's today. For tonight's weather, that low weakens as it pushes into the northeast Gulf Coast. 10-15 uh, millibar low now with mixed precipitation out through the Panhandle. Otherwise, lingering snow showers through much of the mainland. High pressure develops over the western mainland down through the southwest. 10-32 millibar there. And that low out there in the Lucians splits apart into a weakening cluder front. 978 millibar low there, mixed precipitation associated with that system. For Sunday's weather, 1002 millibar low now coming into picture again for Sunday, just south of the Alaska Peninsula. Mixed precipitation associated with that, lingering snow showers and rain showers over the panhandle. For Monday's weather, high pressure building into the Yukon Territory along the border there. Uh, 1049 millibar high there, and there's that low that now reaching the Alaska Peninsula, 1016 millibars there, with mixed precipitation out ahead of that system down through the Bristol Bay and into Kodiak Island and southern Cook Inlet. Otherwise, another low showing up there in the Western Lucians, 992 millibar low there over an occluder front, mixed precipitation associated with that, and lastly, a weak low near the panhandle bringing some lingering rain and snow showers there. For low temperatures Sunday morning, we're going to be looking at 39 in Ketchikan, 40 in Sitka, Juneau 38, Haines and 34, Yakutat 35, Valdez 27, Anchorage 24, over there in Kenai 18, Homer 26, Kodiak 31, 
King Salmon 22 and Dillingham 19 up up and lastly up there McGrath 15. For Sunday afternoon, high temperatures looking at 43 in Ketchikan, 43 in Sitka, 37 in Anchorage, 34 in Talkeetna, 34 in Iliamna, 37 in King Salmon, and 29 in McGrath. For low temperatures, Monday morning looking at 38 there in Ketchikan, Sitka 37, Juneau 31, 20 in Anchorage, 26 in Homer, 36 in Kodiak, 22 in King Salmon. For high temperatures Monday afternoon, 43 in Sitka, 40, uh, 39 in Juneau, 43 in Haines, 35 in Anchorage, 44 in Kodiak, 39 in King Salmon, and 29 in McGrath. Across the North Slope and Interior, low temperatures Sunday morning, looking at 13 there in Fairbanks, 11 in Fort Yukon, minus 5 in Okiavik, 8 in Nome, and 10 in Galena. For high temperatures Sunday afternoon, 30 there in Fairbanks, Fort Yukon, 25, 1 there in Ukiavik, Nome, 20, 22 in Galena, 25 in Tanana. For low temperatures Monday morning, looking at 3 there in Fairbanks, minus 2 in Eagle, minus 3 in Fort Yukon, and Ektuvik Pass, minus 5, minus 13 in Ukiavik. Five there in Kotzebue, seven in Nome, two in Galena, two or one in Tanana. Four high temperatures Monday afternoon, looking at 28 there in Fairbanks, 25 in Eagle, 20 in Fort Yukon, Anaktuvik Pass, 16, Ukiavik, 6, 21 in Kotzebue, 30 in Nome, 26 in Galena, 24 in Tanana. Down through the southwest and Kenai. I'm sorry, Alaska Peninsula, 18 in Bethel, 20 in Antioch, 19 in Dillingham, 26 in Cold Bay, Dutch Harbor 35, 33 in Shimia, 31 in St. Paul. High temperatures Sunday afternoon, 30 in Bethel, 31 in Antioch, 32 in Dillingham, 39 in Cold Bay, Dutch Harbor, 41, 37 in Shimia, 36 in St. Paul. Low temperatures Monday morning, looking at 15 in Bethel, 12 in Antioch, 21 in Dillingham, 27 in Cold Bay, 34 in Dutch Harbor, 34 in Shimia, St. Paul, 28. High temperatures Monday afternoon, 28 in Bethel, 39 in Cold Bay, Dutch Harbor, 41, Shimia, 39. For the CPC 6 to 10 day temperature outlook for March 11th through March 15th, looking at above normal tilts across much of the southwest and even much warmer tilts there in Kodiak Island through the southwest. Otherwise, normal conditions expected across much of the northwest portion of the mainland and extending into the northern portion of the panhandle. Otherwise, warmer tilts show up there in the central and southern panhandle. For the CPC 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook, March 11th through 15th, looking at uh, dry tilts across the northern mainland above normal tilts across the southeast interior and down through south central and that extends over into the panhandle and again for March 11th through March 15th. And now aviation weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the aviation forecast starting with the flying weather on Sunday morning we're going to be looking at IFR conditions as a low pulls through south central Alaska, IFR conditions through the Alaska range over into the eastern interior with some snow showers associated with that. Also some IFR conditions down along the Panhandle and northeast Gulf Coast. Also areas of isolated IFR conditions along the north slope Arctic coast and as well as down there in the southwest in the YK Delta. Also some marginal conditions through the eastern Aleutians and portions of the interior out there in the northern Gulf as well. For Sunday afternoon, looking at clearing conditions through much of the mainland, areas of marginal conditions through the interior and down through the YK Delta, otherwise marginal conditions in the Panhandle, and along with some IFR and IFR conditions along the North Slope, Arctic Coast and some clearing conditions down through Bristol Bay regions through the southwest, also some marginal conditions through the eastern Aleutians and Bering Sea. For Monday morning, 
flying weather areas of marginal conditions through the interior and down through the Yukon River and along the Arctic coast. Also some marginal conditions over the southern end of the Panhandle. As we watch the next system come in, IFR conditions there along the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, otherwise marginal conditions through Bristol Bay. For Monday afternoon flying weather, very nice flying conditions possible for Monday afternoon with some lingering IFR conditions along Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, and through Bristol Bay, otherwise, otherwise marginal conditions through much of the Bering Sea, and IFR conditions out there in the western Aleutians. For past conditions on Sunday, Anaktuvik, marginal, watch for IFR conditions on the southern entrance, same for Adigan. Lake Clark and Merrill, it actually might be a little bit better than marginal, turning to marginal in the afternoon, but IFR early with marginal to maybe even VFR conditions by the later in the day on Sunday. Same for rainy and as well as windy pass. For Isabel, IFR improving to marginal. Mintasta, IFR improving to VFR conditions there. Tanita, VFR. Portage, VFR, some very nice conditions out through there. Chokut went for IFR conditions early, but improving to VFR conditions by the afternoon and evening. And for freezing level Sunday morning, surface level, surface freezing level cuts across the northern bearing in through the Bristol Bay region over in the south central and over into the Yukon Territory, otherwise elevated freezing levels between two and 8,000 feet there in the northern gulf and across the panhandle. For freezing icing conditions on Sunday between two and 8,000 feet out there in the uh, western and central Aleutian with isolated moderate, isolated moderate between two and 7,000 feet across portions of the interior and north slope and areas between isolated and I went for considerable moderate areas there in the panhandle between six and 12,000 feet. For the jet stream on Sunday, low pressure there in the northern bearing just off the coast there of extreme eastern Russia. Otherwise, kind of clockwise flow around that system with westerlies coming into much of the west slope into northwesterlies along the uh, Beaufort Sea coast there. And then uh, up to 65 knots there, 85 to 115 knots with jet streak across the panhandle again with 150 knots coming in in more than a westerly to northwesterly fashion there with high pressure just off the coast there of the panhandle. For 9,000 foot winds, low pressure system there, again northern bearing, kind of clockwise flow there, otherwise northerly flow through much of the mainland with uh, generally less than 30 knots there, otherwise another low just south of the Alaska Peninsula, 40 knots and more of a easterly direction across the Alaska Peninsula, otherwise, again, westerly is across the panhandle, up to 75 knots there. For 3,000 foot winds on Sunday, again, low pressure system there in the northern Bering, kind of clockwise flow there with southerly winds through much of the Bering Sea and high pressure through the mainland. And again, another low pressure, kind of clockwise flow around the low there, bringing easterlies across the Alaska Peninsula. For turbulence on Sunday, surface to 6,000 feet across portions of South Central into Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on Earth, growing up to 7 feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. These sea turtles are among the most highly migratory animals on Earth, some traveling up to 10,000 miles a year between their nesting and feeding grounds. Prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, the species overall is declining, more so in the Pacific. In the Eastern Pacific, the Mexican population was once thought to be the largest in the world and has experienced an alarming decline. This trajectory of decline that we've seen and actually collapse. We're talking about only 20 or 30 turtles nesting every year where thousands used to just 40 years ago. That's the kind of dramatic decline. 
The Western Pacific population has been declining steadily and it's particularly critical to act now before it collapses while there are enough turtles in nests to respond to conservation measures. But threats to all leatherbacks in the Pacific need to be addressed. The top threats to populations are uncontrolled coastal development, all the bad stuff on the nesting beaches, egg harvest, poaching of the females, predation on the eggs by dogs and pigs. Deforestation makes the sand too warm and dry for the, and the eggs don't hatch. So another one is incidental capture in fishing gear. During their vast migrations, they get caught in fishing gear throughout the Pacific. And finally, marine debris, which the leatherbacks mistake for their favorite food, jellyfish, and they choke on those. Protecting leatherbacks in U.S. waters alone is not enough to ensure the continued existence of the species. The highly migratory nature of Pacific leatherbacks requires cooperation and international collaboration. NOAA is focusing on partnerships with Mexico, Central America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Our action plan promotes a holistic recovery strategy that addresses all the sources of mortality. So that's basically ensuring that the remaining nesting sites are protected and the nests produce as many hatchlings as possible. And then secondly, in tandem with that is reducing the fisheries related mortalities. We're working with international partners to incentivize co community participation on the nesting beach conservation and developing alternative livelihood programs that wean communities off leatherback resources and introduce alternative methods for food and income. Recovery is going to take a long time, on the order of 20 to 30 years at least before we see some of these actions bear fruit. But here in the U.S., we can all help leatherbacks by making seafood choices, for instance, that support sustainable fishing practices. And beachgoers can certainly do their part by keeping our oceans clean of plastic debris, picking up marine litter, particularly plastic bags. Together with our partners, we are strengthening protection and conservation efforts to ensure a future for leatherbacks helping them to survive and once again thrive in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. For over 40 years, NOAA scientists have been collecting data and piecing together the story of the gray whale. Each year, new discoveries are made, revealing the secrets of this ancient traveler. With the Northeastern Pacific population recovered, leading scientists from the NOAA Southwest Fisheries Science Center continue their research efforts to help save the Western population from extinction. The most effective way to identify individuals and count the population is to photograph them from the surface. Using the gray whale's distinctive markings and gray spots caused by parasites on their skin, scientists document these characteristics to identify individuals. So we're able to track migratory pathways and corridors by the simple use of photo identification. There are other ways to do that as well, biopsy sampling and genetics. And from the air. Aerial photography is one way you can study animals based on their size and shape. So you can learn a lot about nutritive and reproductive condition of whales just by measuring their size and shape from vertical aerial photographs. You can also put satellite transmitters on them and track them remotely. You put the transmitter on and let them go and you watch them move across the Pacific or down to China or wherever it might be. To further learn and discover where these great sojourners swim, the team of researchers traveled to Russia and set up camp on Sakhalin Island. 
The main focus of our research uh, while we were on Sockland was to collect photo identification. If it was a whale that we had not collected a genetic sample from previously, we would also attempt to collect a sample from the whales. Whereas whales are endowed with natural insulation, their human observers must gear up to brave the cold in order to study these marine giants up close. We're typically only able to work about one third of the time that we're there, and that's mostly due to this fog that just invades the area and sits sometimes for weeks on end. So it can be very challenging to try and do field work in this site. Recently, two whales from the western population surprised scientists by migrating across the Pacific to the waters of California and Mexico. It's a really fun finding. It's added another piece to the puzzle that we didn't previously know about. And I would have to say that it's opened up more questions than we had before. Research scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States share images of animals they've spotted. We take a photograph of an individual off of Sakhalin Island, and we get a phone call from Japanese scientists, and they say, hey, guess what? We've got a picture of a gray whale in Japan. We say, hey, can you send it to us? We'd love to try and match it. They'll send us the picture, we'll compare it to our catalog, and we'll say, hey, we've got a match from Sakhalin to Japan. Unlike many species of whales that still remain on the endangered species list, the Eastern Pacific gray whale, once on the brink of extinction, now numbers about 20,000 individuals. Recovery efforts that started 40 years ago and the ongoing research and monitoring by NOAA scientists have contributed to the conservation of the gray whales. Together with legal protection and public education, scientists are playing their part to ensure the survival of this magnificent migratory animal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the marine forecast, starting with the ice edge, you can see lower concentrations of ice just north of some of the islands out there, Nunavak Island and St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, some lower concentrations of ice in Kuskokwim Bay and Bristol Bay and Cook Inlet as well. For Sunday's marine forecast, for southeast inside waters, winds generally from a southerly direction 15 to 30 with seas as high as 6 feet. Outside waters, winds generally from the southeast at 10 to 20 with seas as high as 10 feet. So look for small crafts there on Sunday. And for Monday, for the inside water, winds generally from a northern direction 10 to 25 with seas as high as 5 feet. Outside water, winds generally from a north Easterly direction, 15 to 20 with seas as high as 10 feet. So again, look for small craft there on Monday. Sunday's marine forecast for South Central, uh, for the Gulf region, winds generally from a northerly direction, 20 to 25 with seas as high as 9 feet. Prince William Sound, winds generally from the northwest at 20, seas as high as 3 feet. And through the Cook Inlet region, winds generally from a northerly direction, at 25 with seas as high as 8 feet. For Monday's marine forecast for South Central in the Gulf region, winds generally from an easterly direction 30 to 40 with seas as high as 15 feet. So look for gales there on Monday. And for the Cook Inlet region, winds generally from a north easterly direction 20 to 35 with seas as high as 12 feet. For again, look for gales there. Sunday's marine forecast, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, around Kodiak Island, winds generally from a northeasterly direction, 30 to 40, with seas as high as 13 feet. So look for gales there. And for the south side of the Alaska Peninsula, winds generally from a northeast, 35 to 40, with seas as high as 13 feet. And north side of the Alaska Peninsula, winds generally from a northeasterly, 25, with seas as high as 6 feet for Monday's marine forecast around Kodiak Island. Winds generally from a easterly direction 25 to 40 with seas as high as 14. So again, look for gales across much of this area. Winds otherwise 
south of Alaska Peninsula. Wind is trending from a variable direction 20 to 25 with seas as high as 15. And north side of Alaska Peninsula, wind is trending northeast at 25 with seas as high as 7. For Sunday's marine forecast, Aleutian chain winds generally from a southerly direction 15 to 35 with seas as high as 19 feet. So look for gales there on Sunday. And for Monday, with a low pressure system coming in, especially out there in the western Aleutians, winds generally from a easterly direction up to 50 there with seas as high as 28 feet. So look for storm force winds out there on Monday. For Sunday's marine forecast, west coast looking at winds only from a easterly direction 15 to 35 with seas as high as 11 feet. Also near the ice edge, seas as high as 19 feet. For Monday's marine forecast for west coast, winds continue out of the east at 15 to 25 with seas as high as 14 there near the ice edge. For Sunday's marine forecast, Arctic coast looking at winds generally from a westerly direction 30 to 40 along the Beaufort Sea coast there along the Chukchi Sea coast winds generally from the northwest at 10 to 15 and down through the Bering Strait winds generally from a north or easterly direction 10 to 30 and for Sunday's marine forecast along the Beaufort Sea coast winds generally from a westerly direction 10 to 15 Northwest coast winds generally from the east at 15 to 20, and down through the Bering Strait winds generally from the east at 20. For tonight's weather, looking at that low pressure system out there in the Lucians, 978 millibar low there, high pressure building into the west, 1033 millibars there, and we'll be watching a low passing into the Yukon Territory, otherwise, 1015 millibars there with mixed precipitation down through the panhandle. For Sunday's weather, that low on the Lucians move into the Bering Sea with mixed precipitation associated with that and trough out ahead of that system. Otherwise, high pressure continues over the mainland, 1,041 millibars there, lingering snow showers in through the Brooks Range and eastern. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.